Matthew 16 and verse 26. This says this, For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? For what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will reward each according to what they have done. Listen, this is talking about somebody whose soul was already found and it got lost. This person already had a relationship with God and it got lost. And he traded the things of the world for their soul. Lord God, I know you don't want me to do that, but it's so much fun. It's talking about works here. You can say, but I believe we're saved by faith. We are saved by faith. You go to heaven by faith. By faith. And grace, you have been saved. But once we are saved and walking with God, you're still saved by faith and grace. But what causes that faith, that grace, to start being diminished in our life to a point where we'll turn our back on God and go do our own thing? Because our works start getting in the way. God, I, I want to go to sleep with that girl. I don't care you said not to do it. I don't care you said wait till we get married, but I want to because I have a need to please me, and so I'm going to go do it. That's called rebellion. But we come back to church, I said, God, forgive me. I said, sorry, I should have done it. I don't forgive me. Oh, there's another good girl. Oh, God, forgive me. And then after a while, like, this, I go, uh, and we go chase this lifestyle, and we're lost. Okay, maybe we're not worried about chasing girls. Maybe we're worried about what we're watching on the internet. Or TV. But the things that are making your house dirty are causing you to lose the things that are important. Those things that make your life special and make your life powerful and makes your life able to climb tall mountains and jump over walls and conquer giants. The power of God that is in you to be able to do those things that others say are impossible. The power of God allow you to walk by faith and not by sight. To be able to declare those things that aren't as if they are. Those things become diminished and tarnished and you lose that power as you choose to walk in the things that are not of God. And suddenly I become weaker and weaker and weaker. My life starts moving to the shadows and we start saying stuff like, well, the church, they don't really love me anymore because they've stopped calling me for the hundredth time. Oh, it doesn't really matter anymore, and I'm finding myself in the shadows, and I, I'm in trouble, I pray. Then I go back to those things until I disappear. And I build a new set of friends. And then we say things like, now these friends care for me more than those people at church because they're around here, they're for me. No, they're not. They're using you. Maybe they love you. Maybe they care for you. But the truth is they're not got your eternity in mind. And the truth is the only one that can have your eternity in mind, the one who's responsible for it, is not the person sitting next to you. It's you. God's given me the responsibility as a pastor to watch over your soul. But that doesn't mean that I'm responsible for your soul. I'm to watch over your soul. And I'm going to go to God one day and say, God, I gave it my best. But man, they, they refused to sweep the house. They, and I kept buying them brooms and they wouldn't, it's not my job to sweep your house. It is your job to sweep your house. It's my job to keep saying, your house is dirty, clean it up. And by the way, Carrie, you got a very nice clean house. I got, Carrie's got a new, he's in a house, he's got a new microwave this last week. I'm very excited for him. Can't wait to come visit your nice clean house. Your life needs to be in a place where you have not lost it. And the it in your life that needs to be found will not be found if you don't turn on the light, get Jesus flowing. Jesus, I just come to you right now and I just ask you to come back into my life and in my home. I want to make you the Lord of my life. Okay, I'm going to start taking care of that mess. And I start sweeping my mess. And then I look for what I've lost. Lord, I I'm going to tell you, as I close with this story, my wife and I, 20 years of marriage, sometimes we've lost it. 
think of two specific times where on a case of, we actually use the D word. Could our marriage last? Dirty. Yeah, the house was dirty, the D word. And I said, honey, the house is dirty. No. Uh, and, and, you know, we were at that point of hopelessness in our marriage. Had somebody say to me, David, well, sometimes it's just better the second time around. You just learn from the first one. You're young when you got married, 20, 21, she was 23. And, and maybe we just, the next time you learn and you find the right mate the second time. And you know what? Because I was so frustrated and I thought I'd lost the friend that I had. My best friend was gone and there's nothing left. And I kissed her. It's kind of like, ah, eh, nothing there, you know. Now, if you're not married, you probably don't understand ex- anything I'm talking about. But if you're married, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The, those days when they're just like, I, do I know you? The day when you're, and somebody comes up and says, hey, how you doing? And you go, fine. Hold on, I, I gotta go home and marry. Those days, what are you gonna do? You got a choice, keep your house dirty or clean it up. Right. And, and I got God's grace, and I'm telling you, it's not that I deserved it, but because he loves me, comes into my life and says, David, fight for your wife. Fight for your family. Fight for your life. And I go inside and say, okay, what do I have to change about me that'll cause this? Because I can't change my wife. I can only change me. And I'm not going to give up the leadership of my home. I am going to be the leader of my home. I am the husband. I am responsible. I will fight for my family. And so I clean my house. I clean myself. And then I present the situation so that if she wants to come in this direction, she can. And by God's grace, she did. And we stand before you 20 years later, husband and wife. And I'll tell you, the last two years have been the best two years of our marriage. But it's not because it was easy. It was because when I didn't want to sweep the house, I chose to sweep the house. And I found what was lost. And I looked for it, and it didn't happen overnight. It wasn't like, oh, God gave me a revelation. I turn around, walk home that next night, and my wife's in love with me again. It doesn't happen. Only in the movies. And life is not like the movies. But I was willing to sweep my house, and then I had to be diligent in taking care of her and serving and opening that door of communication. And I found what was lost. I close as I'm closing. In Revelations chapter 2, and God is saying to his church, nevertheless, I have this against you that you have lost your first love. When was the last time when you were before God that you were just crying? Not because you are panicking, but because you are in love with him. I know men cry, don't talk to me about it. Tough girls don't cry. They go and join the Marine Corps. When was the last time you were so tender before God that you just were fighting in his presence? Michelle had no idea what I was preaching to get there today. And when she said, I'm, she, I was down here worshiping and she said, David, I want to do an altar call. People have lost that love for God. I'm like, did you look at my Bible? You look at my notes. Love God, not the world. Fight for that lost love again. Nevertheless, I have this one thing against you, that you have lost your first love. And the church in Laodicea so of Ephesus served the Lord and they were doing all these amazing things and they were helping the homeless and doing all these great things. I look at Delva and she brings such a part of our culture into our church by making sure we're constantly taking care of those that can't take care of themselves. And maybe you're doing Kairos and, you're doing, and you are being Jesus' love in the world, but inside of here, it's just doing. You're no longer in love with Jesus Christ. You don't want to open your word, just spend time reading. And when you pray, it's just like you're talking to an empty space. You've lost that first love. And he says, nevertheless, I have this one thing against you, that you've lost your first love. I'm going to ask you, have you lost it? Maybe it is something in your life or your home. Maybe it's something in your relationship with God. 
but whatever it is, it can be found. But you have to be willing to turn on the light and realize that your salvation is not in you. Finding it is not in you, but it is in God. You have to be willing to clean your house and sweep your house. You have to be willing to not give up and to press in. Because God has good things in store for you.